Hi guys, Nathan here from the photography team. Um, since moving over to Sony, we've also changed the way that we edit images and we're now using Capture One. Um, previously we used to use Lightroom, however, however, having a go of Capture One, we realized that, that the software is much more powerful, quicker to run, and there's so much more that you can do um, color-wise. And also the Sony files, there is a dedicated Capture One version for Sony and the colour that you get straight out of the camera is, um, is excellent. So let me show you Capture One. <clears throat> this is my lovely model for today's uh, example. This is Ben. Um, similar layout to Lightroom where you have your um, panel. Obviously on the right here we've got a panel with... Um, all our edits, um, the edits that we can do, um, different different panels that obviously do different things. Or on the left, I've got preview of images. Uh, now this is customizable, so if you want to, you can put the images below. You can have the images on the right and the control and panel on the left. Um, totally customizable, and we also have a little toolbar just above the image here. With some certain options. So this is an image taken with the Sony uh, 55 millimeter 1.8 straight out of camera. Um, what I've done is and what you can do is you can create your own menu. So I've got a menu here with all the sort of different edits and, and options that I currently use myself. So starting off with white balance um, you've got your usual options, daylight, or we can use the dropper. So let's pick Ben's shirt. So yeah, that's fine. Moving down, we've got exposure. Now we have exposure, which is obviously the exposure of the image. I do have highlight alert set, which is why it's gone red. We've got a contrast slider, a brightness slider, which is like the white slider in um, Lightroom. So we can brighten the image or we can darken the image. And we also have a saturation slider. Now what we can do is if we click these three lines here, there are that come with the software, just a few free um, sort of presets. Obviously you can create your own presets. So if I wanted to, I could, just as a base, I could select Vivid. I could have a black and white. So let's, just to start, we'll select Vivid 1. And you'll see what that's done is that it, that has exchanged, that has edited the exposure for me, contrast, brightness and saturation. And then we've got a high dynamic range tab here which is your highlights and shadows. So we can move the highlight slider up and you'll see the sky, the highlight starts to start to um, come down. And obviously with the shadow, we can bring up the shadows. We've got a clarity slider. Um, we have a clarity slider here. Now obviously when you use the clarity slider, you do sort of it does affect the image quite a bit and it doesn't look very realistic. But we also have a structure slider here um, and we can move that. If I zoom in on, on Ben while I do this. So if we reset those, if so the usual clarity slider, affecting the whole image. And then the structure slider, which is just Gives it a little bit of sharpening, but it's less. Uh, there's less of a dramatic effect on the actual image. We then got vignette. Well, we know what a vignette is. We'll add a little bit of vignette on this one. Curves. Um, so we have our usual sort of RGB curve here. We can select red, green, blue, or Lua. Uh, and again, if you click the three bars here, 
we have some presets so we can set a five point um, curve and then adjust it manually um, for this example I would probably use mid tones brighter we come down to color balance so this is this is like um, split toning basically so we can the shadows here so we can adjust the shadow tone we can adjust the highlight tone and we can adjust the midtones there's lots of um, ways to change color um, we can select just the shadow um, sort of picker here so we have more control over the colors and the shadows I'm not going to do any toning today or if you want to master this is this is everything so you can move everything to have more of a sort of warmer tone now this one here color editor this would be your who saturation and um, luminance but there's a lot more controllability over here so if I was to want to change the greens in the image I would use my color picker and I'd pick the color green and then there's a hit there's a little thing here where you can click view, view selected color range so you'll see that the image has gone black and white however we've got greens the color green is, is illuminated in the background there and we can if we want to we can bring that to incorporate a few more tones of green as you'll see there so that's that's the color range that I want to affect and then I can change the hue of the greens the good thing is you'll notice that it's not affecting anything else in the image we can desaturate it, we can really add some saturation or we can lighten it so let's bring the whole image back in again so you see there that I've just affected the greens and another another great feature of Capture One is the Skin Tone tab so what we'll do is we'll click, click the Skin Tone tab um, use the color dropper here and we will select a color on Ben's face uh, let's view the selected color range so you'll see that it will affect obviously a little bit of the uh, foreground there but we can adjust this Or well, great thing that you can do with this software is you can use layers and masks, but just for this example, I'm going to use the um, the skin tone adjuster. So basically, we can see that yes, some of the foreground is going to be affected, but Ben's skin has been illuminated here. Now, with this, we can adjust the hue, so we can. Now these are only minor changes, it's nothing drastic, but we can change the hue, we can obviously change the saturation. And the lightness, so we can lighten that skin, or we can sort of bring it down a bit. So we will add a little bit of lightness in the skin. Now uniformity, this is where it becomes really... Um, sort of strong and clever so we can the colors within the skin we can get those to blend together and give a more uniformed look so we use the hue slider you see how his skin has gone more sort of magenta but it's blending together I mean that's a bit too much we can saturate the skin 
and then we can use some the lightness so we can lighten his skin like that now as you'll see um, what that's done is it's it's sort of corrected his skin if I was to show you before and after It's just blended the colours in on the skin. That may be a bit too much on there, but um, I'll just go back to the exposure and just bring the exposure down. But the red tone in his cheeks is now sort of blended in with his skin. Um, again, we have various options again, so we can, um, like I said, we can do layers. We can add clarity as we did, um, lens corrections, lens profiles, we can add grain, we can add sharpening, so we can sharpen the image there, we can we've got noise reduction, so all the things that you used to use in on Lightroom, they're all available on Capture One. And moving to this tab up here, we um, obviously we were able to crop the image. So, usual, usual methods. So let's let's crop it into a portrait orientation. Please bear with me. Now what happens is when you crop the image like this, you still you still have the rest of the image in view, but it's obviously shaded out. So there's a crop. And what will happen is, and when I click off this um, tool, the image will be cropped. We can rotate the image. We can adjust the horizon to, to obviously level the image. Um, we also have a spot removal tool. So let's select that. Let's zoom in on Ben's face. We right click we'll bring up our tool so we can make our healing brush smaller we we'll just click on a few areas and it will correct it exactly the same as you would expect on Lightroom um, there's two options for spot removal there is um, the spot or there is dust. So if you've got dust in, on your sensor, there's a different option for removing dust in the sky. We can draw masks if we want to. So we could draw a mask around Ben's face if we wanted to, and then we could make local adjustments um, with that mask. We can use a gradient mask so we can have a gradient mask in the sky so we can then just adjust that um, you can obviously erase parts of the mask and you can draw to add to the mask so it's very customizable um, great bit of software um, i find that the images upload and render super quick. Let's get rid of that mask. Yeah, they render quickly um, and 
what I find as well is if I want to export the image, so let's find the export toolbar. I'm very new to this, I'm still learning, so what I'm telling you now is just very basic. So we can export that as a JPEG. Uh, we'll do full, full size. So 100% JPEG, and we'll export it to the desktop. Let's click process. And that's done, that's done already. So, you know, if you're looking at editing a full wedding, you're going to be able to export all of your images in no time. So that's really great. It just seems quicker than Lightroom. I'm not knocking Lightroom because there are certain features in Lightroom that I still have to use. Uh, one thing that Capture One doesn't support at the moment is um, is on spot removal. You can't actually draw. You can't draw a line and remove, say, a hair with this software. Or I haven't found a way of doing that yet. Um, and also for uh, HDR images where you've bracketed images. So for when we use when we do property photography, I'm not going to be able to use Capture One because I need to um, obviously merge the images. And that's not a feature available at the moment in Capture One. However, for the price you pay, Capture One, I think for Sony version, for the full version, is about sixty pounds, sixty seventy pounds. Um, you can get a full version that covers all camera brands. Uh, that's a little bit more money, but just the customizability and the power of this software just seems to be a lot more, um, a lot more higher than uh, than Lightroom. Um, there is a link in the description below we, with a 10% off code. If you are interested in buying, the, buying this software, then please do use that link. That will help us greatly. Um, and if you have any questions, then please do comment. I'll try and answer them. Like I said before, we are quite new to this software. Once we start using it, then we'll start um, giving you a few tips on how to use this software. But for the time being, we're finding it great. We're finding it more powerful than Lightroom, and we're really enjoying the experience, especially with the Sony files. So thanks for watching. My name's Nathan, and you've been watching The Photography Team.